What's up YouTube, my name is David. And today we are going to talk about sounds that are illegal. Sounds, music, voices, these things can all change the world and make people happy and help make the world a better place. However, sometimes they just make people mad and cause problems and get you in trouble. This list is reserved for those noises, those sounds that will get you in trouble, get you banned, get you fined, and sometimes get you arrested. If you like this video, I hope you like it physically with the thumbs up button that's, you know, there. And if you really like this video, don't forget to subscribe because I am consistently working on new videos all the time. I try to keep them relevant to each other, but I'm trying to be a bit more creative and expand as well. So yeah, hit that subscribe button and I don't have any sponsors yet, so you don't have to sit through a sponsored ad yet. So, you know, early bird gets the sponsorless content, I guess. Anyways, today's video, 10 sounds that are illegal. Number one, Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh in China, specifically. You cannot say Winnie the Pooh in China anymore or talk about it or post about it or online or anything. And it's because apparently the leader of China, Xi Jinping, did not like people comparing him to Winnie the Pooh with his facial features and mannerisms and bodily shape, I guess. So he banned it, just like China does with a lot of things involving words and phrases online. So really I could dedicate this entire list to words and sounds and phrases and things that China has banned, but I figured Winnie the Pooh was a good way to bundle them all together. So for those that plan on traveling abroad to China, just, just don't bring up the bear, man. Number two, the thunderous roar that happens when you break the speed of sound, the Mach 1 flight speed. Mach 1 is the term that is used to describe breaking the speed of sound or the sound barrier it is actually a physical limit of the speed that sound can travel in ambient air. And when you're in something like a fighter jet specifically and you travel faster than the speed of sound, some complicated physics things goes on and an extremely loud crack happens when you do that. Also, you get this very cool hemispherical cloud shape surrounding the jet, so that is pretty awesome. For a number of reasons, I'm sure the Mach 1 flight speed is banned for civilians in public use, probably because for a jet or a plane to hold itself together at such high speeds requires military-grade technology in the first place. And honestly, I just don't think there's any good reason to allow Jim and Joe down the road to fly around their plane at somewhere around a thousand miles per hour just because they want to. It just kind of sounds like a recipe for disaster. So, yeah. Number three, wireless audio in the 600 megahertz range. According to a new FCC ruling that happened not too long ago, wireless microphones that operate in the 600 megahertz range are now illegal to use. The United are now illegal to use in the United States. The 600 megahertz band has now been purchased basically by broadcasters in the United States and to prevent interference, the wireless microphones that use this bandwidth are now no longer permitted to be used. These changes were announced back in 2017 with the FCC placing a deadline of July 13th, 2020, which has already come and passed this year. So this was actually a pretty recent change that puts the 600 megahertz wireless microphones on this illegal sounds list. Next up on this list is a noise that I hope hope none of you ever make or hear because, well, here it is. This is called blast fishing or dynamite fishing. It is completely illegal and really just why? I mean, for what purpose? Basically what happens is people put dynamite in the water or another high explosive and it causes this massive pressure wave to surge through the water when it explodes completely rupturing the swim bladders of these fish destroying their internal organs and just eradicating entire environments it is terrible for ecosystems in the ocean or freshwater or wherever it's happening and it is illegal for this reason people used to do this because it was very effective because it kills all the fish in the surrounding area from just the pressure wave alone it doesn't even need to be a fiery explosion near the fish the pressure wave surging through the water by itself is what kills the fish. Not only did it kill fish in a proximity, but it usually fatally damaged fish 
in surrounding areas as well. This practice has been deemed inhumane and just awful, which has thankfully placed blast fishing or dynamite fishing on this list of illegal sounds. The next item on this list is something that deals with sound level more than the sound source itself. This is the 90 decibel OSHA standard for an eight hour workday in the United States. I've done lots of traveling over the United States and I've seen many museums and old exhibits where remnants of industrial revolution and infrastructure growth and birth still exist and can be seen today. And one example that comes to mind is mining. Coal mining, silver mining, gold mining, and other precious metal mining has been a staple for laborers over the past few hundred years. It's hard to grasp the conditions these workers were put in to get the job done. Mining tunnels are loud. They are very echoey and the equipment that is used in these tunnels like air jacks and air hammers and drills and things of that sort are also incredibly loud. And because of things like this that happen in the mining world and other industries that use heavy equipment and things of the sort, OSHA, the Occupational Health and Safety Administration in the United States, implemented a 90 decibel standard as the limit of constant volume level during an eight hour workday. For example, most typical airplanes run between 120 and 140 decibels, which without hearing protection, without being inside the plane, you know, just somebody on the runway will obliterate your eardrums. That's really, really loud. Same with a rock concert or a completely packed football stadium. This is over the 100 decibel range. Now, under that, near the 90 decibel range, isn't as awful for your ears, but prolonged exposure, eight hour work days, seven days a week can do some permanent damage to your eardrums. Pre-OSHA days, it was very common for miners and other people that worked hard labor jobs to lose their hearing or be hard of hearing by the age of 40. Some people caught on and tried stuffing their ears with cotton and gene material, anything they could get their hands on to muffle the deafening sounds in the work conditions below the earth that they were in. But thankfully, love them or hate them, the laws implemented by OSHA today are protecting the eardrums of people that are keeping this country working. The next item on this list is one that I am familiar with growing up as a car guy. This is nitrous. <laughs> That ominous spray that allows cars to go into hyperdrive on movies. But also in real life, that ominous spray coming from the guy's car that just pulled up to you at this red light signals that you probably shouldn't race him because you're probably going to lose. Nitrous is an instant steroid for the engines of your race cars that allows them to go beyond peak performance for a short period of time. This has been made famous by the Fast and Furious movies, but also real life street racers as well. It is not illegal to have nitrous bottles in your car. However, it is illegal to have them hooked up up. Why? I don't know. Faster cars, more danger. You know how it is. I personally have never known anybody getting arrested for having nitrous in their cars, but I'm sure it's happened somewhere. The next illegal sound, this one is more shunned or personally banned than anything, but this is playing Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven on guitar at NAMM. If you haven't seen this video, you should go watch it because it's hilarious. I went to my local guitar store and I asked the salesman about it one time and he just looked at me in the face and said, don't. Really, I'm not that great at guitar, so got nothing to worry about with me around. Imagine a pop song going viral and you hear it on the radio 10 times in a week and you just get tired of it. Stairway to Heaven is similar except guitar store owners have been hearing it for the past 40 years. Understandably so, it makes the list. <laughs> DMCA copyrighted songs on Twitch. This is another recent development that is upsetting a lot of streamers and YouTubers and people alike. The DMCA has been quite present when it comes to copyright strikes over the past decade, really. Thankfully, I've never had any problems with them because I, I don't put music on my videos just to avoid problems entirely. However, a new proposal from the DMCA would put it into law that it is a felony charge to play DMCA copyrighted music on your Twitch streams. And this charge can be punishable by jail time. If this law goes through, you can actually be put in jail for accidentally playing copyrighted music on a Twitch live stream. Yeah. Hopefully enough people raise their voices about this and just tell them, you know what, this is getting a little bit out of hand. Let's not go this far. Okay. Sound number nine on this list, loud exhaust in the state of California. <laughs> 
Some people love loud exhaust, some people hate it. I guess it just depends on the context or the setting of the situation. But ironically, this is not a potential felony charge like the previous item. However, it can get you a hefty fine in the state of California. California has basically banned the modification of exhaust systems in cars. This alone has caused many gearheads to leave the state or protest or complain online, but California does not seem to be budging on this issue at all. And the last item on this list is your phone signal on a plane. Everyone is used to it nowadays. Getting on a plane, texting, you know, the last few people that you might text, checking Instagram one more time, but then you put your phone on airplane mode as you're instructed to do so. But what if you don't? There have been tons of videos made on this subject with your phone potentially interfering with signals between the plane and ground. And if enough people on the plane are still using their phone or trying to connect to towers, it can cause radio interference and some big problems can arise. Now there's nobody walking around the plane with some fancy scanner or anything looking to see if you're off airplane mode or not. However, if by chance, for some reason, a flight attendant did find that you're on your phone and you don't have airplane mode activated and you're trying to connect using your phone, you could be in for a felony charge because at that point you are disregarding the commands of the flight crew and that is illegal. I actually remember a time growing up when you had to turn your phones off completely while you were on the plane and they would check to see if your phones were on or off sometimes. So for me, it's a nice break, putting your phone down, having no choice to check it because there's nothing coming in or going out on it. It's a nice part about flying for me. So just put your phone down for the flight, don't risk it and turn your airplane mode on. That's all I have for today's list. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel to see more like this. I've been pretty designated to singing and beatboxing exclusively in my previous videos, but I'm trying to stay relevant while branching out and getting a bit more diverse. Also, I am putting a lot more time into making videos so I can put out at least two videos a week from now on. If you have any suggestions of things you'd like me to uh, put together and put out in the future, don't forget to comment below. You know, let me know somewhere. As always, thanks for watching.